Well, hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we encourage you and equip you to dare to hear the voice of God. I am delighted to have back for part two of last week's episode, Dr. Candice Smithyman. She is here. She is an apostolic and prophetic minister who is the founder and co-pastor, along with her husband, Adam, of Freedom Destiny Church and founder of Dream Mentors International, a biblical and transformational life coaching school. She hosts the Glory Road TV show on Faith Networks, Destiny Image Podcast Network, Charisma Podcast Network, and various internet outlets. She has authored many books and writes for online publications like The Elijah List, Charisma, and Spirit Fuel. And we're here for part two of our episode to talk with her about her book that just was newly released in February. Yay! Releasing Heaven. So what I wanted to talk with us about on this episode, welcome back by the way, Dr. Candice. So excited to be here again. It's wonderful. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. We had such a great time talking and we got a lot of stuff covered in um, part one of our episode, but I want to talk about your heavenly encounters, which you talk about through this book. And I want to read this quote um, out of your chapter about caught up to heaven. And you say this, you say, God is looking for people with hearts who want to have heavenly encounters, who want to be connected with him. He wants to reveal himself because when he reveals himself, and your life has changed, you're going to go and bring him to other people, and their lives are going to radically change as well. Amen. So can we talk about this heavenly encounter? Can we talk about, I mean, when I was reading it, I was like, well, who doesn't want a heavenly encounter? But there are people out there that are unsure of it. So can you talk to us about like, what is a heavenly encounter and why do we want one? Yes, you know, really heavenly encounters are something we should be having every day of our life. If you are eternity in action, if you are eternal first and temporal second, then you should be experiencing heaven on a daily basis. You should be uh, in that place of hungering and thirsting after life everlasting, after what is our home? You know, I mean, we're really aliens here. So what is this home that we're, that we're going to, that, that we really come from, you know? And how can we begin to bring that home and transform this environment just the way that home is? But we've got to get used to what is home. And, and the Bible has clearly dictated what is home, who lives at home. Jesus is there. He is on his throne. And so, you know, these are our core concepts, but it hasn't been taught that way to us over, over our life. It's been taught like, you know, read the Bible, but that's for tomorrow, not for today. And I never believed that, Debbie. Every time I picked up the word of God, I could hear the Holy Spirit say, but this is for you now. Like I didn't give you uh, these instructions for you to just sit back and wait for, you know, hunker down until it's time that you, you pass away. No, I need you to be active, but I need you to be bringing heaven to where people are today. So heavenly encounters are something that we should be hungering and thirsting after. You know, they don't have to be strange. A heavenly encounter can simply be where uh, you actually just hear the voice of the Lord for yourself. You know, my sheep know my voice. That's what he says. We just listen to him. We just know, we, we come to that place of knowing that he loves us and he's just giving us an instruction for ourselves. Then we begin to open ourselves up for instructions for other people and how we can begin to really change our atmosphere. All that is considered to be a heavenly encounter. Now there's great, there's other levels of that. And I do talk about other levels of that in the book, but really you having a mindset, if people will get a mindset that they are heavenly first and earthly second. And I believe that that's what the apostle Paul was trying to tell us in the new Testament time and time again, he was flogged. He was imprisoned. I mean, he went through all kinds of trials and everything. And what did he come up with to share with the churches in a letter? Even remember, he wasn't even physically present in a lot. These were letters. Yeah. He's trying to tell them, listen, I'm in a difficult way, but I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. You know, this is going on in my life, but I know my inheritance is in him. I want the eyes of your heart to be enlightened. I mean, so he was talking from a place of trial in the earth realm, but he was not living in the earth realm. He was living in the heavenly realm while his body was in earth. I don't know about you, Debbie, but I want to tap into that. Like, I need to know what that is all about. And so we need to stop reading the word like it's this just straight up logos. It's a rain 
became a word. And when you grab a hold of it for yourself and it totally transforms you and you come to that place of realizing that you are in eternity already, that you are not going to die and you can have all of this, you're going to begin to start asking some of these questions and Jesus is going to meet you there. Holy Spirit is going to meet you there. Angelic hosts are going to meet you there because you're speaking the word and angels are coming to the command of the word of God. You're going to begin to open yourselves up to heavenly encounters simply by faith in who you are today. Ah, that's so good. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. On the inside. I'm like, this is so good. Preach, preach, preach. This is, this is exactly what people need to understand is that the Bible is not just this single dimension of that was then. And it's not for now. Like, I don't know how many people are like, Oh, but no, I can't really do that. That was for the, only the um, apostles or the disciples that walked with Jesus. And I'm like, well, then why are we even here? Then why are we even reading the word? Like, if I can't have hope, if I can't rise to that, if I'm not a follower and a disciple of his, and I can't do the same things, because I'm pretty sure he said, greater things are you going to do in my name. And he transferred his authority to us. And so I just want to say to anybody that's listening, that heavenly encounters are for you. And I loved how, Dr. Candice, you said that it could just be hearing God for ourselves and having a revelation of that. But can you kind of talk with us about some of, like, people are thinking, well, then what really is a heavenly encounter? Some of it, sometimes it's for us hearing God for ourselves, but can you share some of your stories that you share in the book, some of your favorites? Can you pull those out? Yes, you know, um, well, I had a supernatural encounter, literally, when I was 24 years old. I was healed of anxiety, depression, and Crohn's disease in one touch from the Lord. Um, I prayed a simple prayer. There was really no faith behind it. The prayer as in, God, if you're there and you can hear me, I can't get myself out of this one. There's not much faith in that. I was at a really critical time in my life and um, the Holy Spirit came upon me in the middle of the night in my sleep and I woke up and I was completely healed of anxiety and fear that had surrounded my life. Um, and there's a lot of backstory about that in the book. I won't go it's into good. detail uh, right now, but read about that. And then from that point forward, I could read and understand the word of God. And I began to wash myself in his word, memorizing every scripture I could on fear, anxiety, and depression to make sure to keep those demonic forces at bay, but also to cleanse my soul in a way that they couldn't come and attack. They wouldn't have anything to attach to because I wouldn't be living in that place of lack of faith or depression or anxiety, whatever it was. So I was supernaturally healed of the age of 24. Uh, and that's in the book. I also had a, a later time when my children were younger that I was actually caught up to heaven, just mm-hmm. like the apostle Paul. He, we don't know for sure if it's him or not. Okay. But he does say uh, in the book of Corinthians that he, was caught up, okay, well, that someone was, we believe it's him, all right, but but as a result of this, okay, which is very, very important, he, he went to this place, okay, and he went and explained a little bit about that, but he also said that there was a messenger of Satan that was sent to torment him as a result of the amazing uh, revelations that he had, has received, and so I just want you to know that although I went to a place where I was caught up to heaven, I have had a lot of torment as a result of those kinds of things, but really it was a re- it was because I was radically changed mm-hmm. and those type of things keep me in a humble space and place yeah. so that, so that I can learn to rest in the love and the joy and the peace of the Lord and that it is not coming from natural things, but it comes from the supernatural and see, and Paul knew that, that no matter where God had taken him. And so I'd share about that encounter and, um, and how, when I came back from that, my children who came home from school, I was gone for about 45 minutes. And I, I tell details about that in the book. When I came home, my oldest daughter says, uh, my gosh, mom, what happened to you? You look totally different. Like what's going on? She goes, you had an encounter with God, didn't you? And I said, you know, I don't want to talk about it right now. You know, we're going to go to church tonight though, you know, get dressed and you know, I'm going to make you dinner. We're going to go. Well, we went to church. Nonetheless, my pastor, uh, Alex saw my pastor and, and told him that something had happened to me and that um, I needed to tell him. And so he came to me and he says, Alex says something's happened to you and that, um, you know, you should share it with me. And I said, you know, I don't really want to talk about it. He goes, no, you know, I, I think you really need to share with me. So I share with him just a little bit. He says, I want you to come up to the front of the church and I want you to share. <laughs> so I, I went to the front of the church. I mean, listen, I had no makeup on or anything. I mean, I was like all undone. You know, I'd been fasting for a couple of days. You know, I was just, it, it, that was not my interest. So I went up to the front 
I barely opened my mouth and everyone in the church started crying and started just the glory of the Lord just fell. And so that began kind of a, uh, a movement uh, in and around my life where the Lord would uh, send me to places. I would pray, prophesy. There would be miracles, healings, different things like that would happen because the glory of God was present. Mm -hmm. And the, so the glory of the Lord changed me. And yes, I've had a lot of um, trauma and difficulties that have happened even since that time. But I do know that, um, that I was changed and that those that were around me were changed as a result. Then later I have another encounter in the book where the Lord actually took me to a mansion in heaven. And these images are burned in my, in my brain. So I can literally go to those places in an instant. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, it's just, it's immediate for me. Um, I see the Royal banquet table in heaven and I actually take you there and I walk you through it. I walk you through everything that's on the table. Um, I, I take you through the heavenly vats. There's vats. Uh, in the mansion of heaven, and I believe this is this mansion, this enormous mansion, was um, a a suite that was fit for a king. So I, I believe that this is a place where Jesus rules and reigns. Um, then on the left side, there are treasuries with all of these jewels. Um, now we have access to all of that now. He didn't show that to me for for what was coming. He showed it to me now because he wanted me to tell people. And the reason I know this is because when I was first caught up to heaven many years before, he said to me, you have to go back. Because I said, I don't want to go back. Okay. After I went to this place with him and I explained this in the book, I said, I don't want to go back. I was married and I had three children. For me to say, I don't want to go back. And I love my husband and I love my kids. It was a very vital place that I was at. And he said, you have to go back because you have things I want you to tell the people. So later when he took me to the royal table, which was many years later, I realized, I, you want me to tell these people this, this is not just for me. Yeah. Well, he's been sending me all kind of all over to share the stories. And when I began to share about the royal table, especially people began to come and I, it's not right in this moment, but I go into deep, deep specifics and I have CDs where I will kind of walk you through that. Mm -hmm. um, a very, very deep place with God. He reveals things to people. Um, they're healed. I've seen people get out of wheelchairs simply by, by listening to the testimony of actually uh, being seated at the royal table with Christ. And I actually can take you to those places because I'm actually there. Like I can be there in any moment. And I know that might sound crazy, but these images are burned in my brain. So they're, so it's such that in an instant I can be in that place with him and I can hear him and, and I can see him and sense him. And so I, I wanted people to realize that for themselves. And in the book, I do everything I can so that you can be in that place too and receive an impartation where you're able to know you have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. and, and that may be something that's uncomfortable for you if you even read and you go, oh my gosh, you know, because I read from scripture. It is from scripture, you know, about the royal table and all that. And I explain all that. And the vats are Hosea chapter two. So I'm explaining everything. But if it becomes uncomfortable for you, especially the royal table experience, many times it's because people don't feel like they deserve to have a seat at his table. Yeah. And so I've had people who've said, well, I can't, I, I, I realized when, when you walked me through this, that I didn't want Jesus to come sit next to me because I don't feel like I'm worthy. And we're like, boom, now we've seen Yes. where you're at and where you're lacking faith and understanding of the fact that he's called you to be seated there. You are seated with him in heavenly places, not because of your works, not because of doing anything right, Amen. but simply by the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice, and the fact that he has resurrected you. Live out your inheritance. So it has a lot of different uh, emotional things that happen as a result of that, but always good because even if you find out it's uncomfortable for you, mm -hmm. if you take what's uncomfortable to the Lord, it will be the very thing that will break off that lie over your life. So you're able to stay seated and positioned with him all the time. Debbie, I pray for my seat in heaven. 
I don't pray from an earthly standpoint and right. then try and reach up there and get whatever I, I need. I pray for my seat. And if I'm going to the vats, I pray from inside the mansion. I'm at my seat. All I got to do is go up the stairs to the vat. And I explain that. But I'm not coming from the earth to heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm already there. I'm going to pray from what I already experienced by faith in this area, and then God, boom, brings a supernatural counter as a result of it. When I pray for people for okay. healing or for miracles, I don't pray from, oh Lord, you know, if you could possibly do, I pray that it is his will. I'm seated with him at the table. He wants this for everyone that's here. Yeah. He, he, he didn't die that we could, shouldn't walk in it. He died, buried, and resurrected that we should walk in it. So you see the difference between confession and declaration because yeah. I'm declaring what I really believe to be true about who he says he is and what he says he's done for me. And if we as a people come to that place, we're going to rock the kingdom and he's going to come back. He's raising us up in him to come back for that bride that knows how to sit at the table with him. If you can't sit at the table with the master and operate your fork and your spoon right and all that kind of stuff, then you need to go to the kitty table. And I didn't see one of them in heaven. So you're getting yourself to the place where you need to sit at the table with him he's coming back for that bride we all say right the church of jesus christ i want him to come back lord return for us he's going to return but he's returning for us to raise up now and believe we're seated there already then he's coming back because we're already living like we're there which is what he always tells us in his word we have to be there first yeah. in everything and then he does it yeah, that's so good. Ah, because it is so, I mean, it's that mind shift, right? That we have the mind of Christ. People are like, well, no, no, no. Scripture says that when you receive him, that you have the mind of Christ, that you are seated with him in heavenly places. And it's from that position of authority that he has gifted us, that he has granted us, that we can do and say and operate in these things. Now I am, I believe there's not a formula for anyone to be able to like, if you do this, you do this, you do this. But if somebody's listening to this and they're like, I want to have heavenly encounters. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to see those things. What are some things that you could encourage them to do to begin to position themselves to walk in, in experience encounters with Jesus because one encounter from Jesus radically transformed everybody in the Bible and it will do the same thing for us. So what would you say to somebody that's listening? Like, okay, well, that's really great. Like she's Dr. Candace and she's had all these amazing things, but what would you say to that average listener? That's like, how can I do this? You know, I would first start off by saying, let him love you. Hmm. Let him love you right where you're at. In every moment, your worst moments, your best moments, learn to be with him who loves you. Good. Learn not to despise yourself. He did not die for something that he despises. He died for something that he loves. And he raised you up to be with him. Learn to get in his word and meditate on his word. Study his word. If Here's a quick and easy way to do this, Debbie, and I like to teach people this. Absolutely. No matter what you're experiencing in your life, okay? Let's just take fear as an example, all right? Go to the concordance in the back of your Bible and look up every single scripture on fear. Okay, you don't have to remember Genesis to Revelation. Just go in the back and deal with your issue and look up fear and memorize as many scriptures as you can on fear. Then you will begin to walk in faith that fear is not of God. And so therefore, when you have fear, Mm, you must not be walking with him, okay? Mm -hmm. This is how we develop our discernment, okay? And you can find every problem issue you've got in, in and around your life can be found in the topical part, the concordance in your Bible. Start there. Then just begin to learn uh, to not listen to him and then talk to him and talk to him about everything. They're just Lord, you know, I just want to tell you, you know, I love you so much, or you know, I'm I'm so happy about this, or Lord, I'm so sad about this. This is upsetting me so much. I need to talk to you about this, okay? So you learn to develop a relationship with him, okay? Because heavenly encounters are based on relationship. 
See, every time God gives me a word, and Debbie, you and I talked about this in, in the Glory Road show yes. about prophetic encouragement. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, every time a word is given to us for ourselves or for somebody else, mm -hmm. it's done because of a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Yes. And, and that only comes through mind renewal. You've got to believe that he loves you, so yes. meditate on how much he loves you, and that he is willing to heal you speak to you, speak to you for somebody else, that this is a part of how heaven communicates with the earth and that you are a vital piece of bringing heaven to the earth. So you've got to learn to find your value in the kingdom and the fact that you are vital as a listener to be somebody that can bring heaven into your environment, into your home, your workplace, your church, your neighborhood, whenever it is, you're a vital piece. And so start there, start with the disciplines, prayer, reading the word of God, worship, fasting. Um, you do what, what needs to be done in the area of discipline. You're disciplining your soul. Our souls are not trained because it's part of our earth suit. It's trained for the earthly realm. We got to train it for the heavenly realm. You're brand spanking new on the inside. You have a brand new spirit. Inside your spirit is his Holy Spirit. You are pure, holy, righteous, saved, redeemed. Every time he looks at you, what does he see? Boom, he sees your spirit. He doesn't see what happened to you yesterday. He doesn't see your mistake. He doesn't, he's not looking at that. He's looking at your spirit, man, and he's talking to your spirit, man. Then he's expecting that that is going to overflow into your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, change you, then manifest in your body and bring it forth in the kingdom. So good. That's so good. And I think it's practical steps that everybody can apply. And really it is us taking the steps to do what scripture already says. And then that's in the place where we're going to encounter Jesus. Um, because he said, those that seek me will find me. When you seek for me with your whole heart, you will be found by me. And that is his heart, is that he encounters us right where we're at, no matter where we're at. If we feel that we're a mess or we feel that we're doing okay, he still wants to meet us right in that. And he wants to take us to the next level in him. So it is so, so good. Um, Dr. Candace, can you tell um, us how we can get our copy of Releasing Heaven and how can we connect with you? Yes, you can get your copy at any major bookseller, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, go to my website at CandaceSmithman.com. I also want to bring up that I have some amazing soaking CD sets that go along really well with the book. You can um, get a, a whole um, one uh, where I actually walk you into the royal table and there's prophetic music being played behind it by my son who is a prophetic worship leader. And we've actually done, uh, that's in my Soaking in, in His Righteousness CD set. But I also have another one that is called Faith for the Heavens. And it's a three disc soaking uh, set and there's five minute soaking prayers, there's 15 minute ones, and there's 30 minute ones. And I walk you through different aspects so you can receive an impartation of being seated with them in heavenly places or going to the royal table and if you begin to put that as part of your discipline so you're soaking yes. and studying the word of god you are going to be changed in your your atmosphere your whole atmosphere is going to be changed your personal atmosphere and then you're going to begin to see changes outside people can also contact me at candace smithman um, public page on facebook uh, my at Candace Smith them in Instagram. They can go to my uh, my uh, Glory Road Television Show, which is on YouTube. They can subscribe there. And I also have two podcasts. The Destiny Image Podcast Network has On the Glory Road, which is the interviews that are in podcast format, and that's at the Destiny Image Podcast Network .com. And then Charisma Charisma Podcast Network has Manifest His Presence which is about a 20 minute teaching on a weekly basis that I do to help you learn to manifest the presence of God in your life in every way. I'll walk you through a whole lot of different disciplines so that you're able to get to that place and really begin to manifest his presence. Mm, I love that. I love all the tools that you have available to people because that's, I think, practically what we need as we go forward. And so thank you for sharing about those soaking CDs. And if people are like, what's soaking? It's a powerful tool that we can use. And so in fact, I'm going to go to your website and I'm actually going to get those myself because I'm like, yes, I want us, I want you to walk me through being, I know being seated in heavenly places, but I want to be sitting at that banquet table and I want to be walked through this. I want to be renewing my mind and refreshing my mind and, and 
really getting this concept, not just in my mind, but in my heart and in my spirit and in my soul. I'm grabbing a hold of that. So thank you, Dr. Candice, for sharing that with us. And then before we go, I just want to tell everybody, you've got to get a copy of her book, Releasing Heaven. You are good. There's so much that we didn't even get to cover in the two episodes, last week's episode and this week's episode. But can, as we finish um, wrapping up today, would you just kind of pray for um, our viewers and our listeners, whatever God has placed on your heart? Oh God. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord. We thank you that you love us. God, we thank you that you love us so much. We thank you, Father, that, that you say in your word, we are seated with you in heavenly places. That is our seat. And I just ask you, Father, to help those that are listening, viewing today, Father, that they would begin to take their seat next to you, Lord Jesus. It's a special seat that they have for you, Father. It is a seat that you have their name on the back of the chair. Their name is on the back of the plate. It is a special place directly uh, designed by you for them, Father. And, and Lord, I thank you that, that they are called to be in that seat, Father. It's a, it's a special place, Lord, and that you have a special plan and purpose for them, Father. And I just ask, Lord Jesus, that, that those that are watching would have, have heavenly encounters in such a way, Father, that you would become so real to them, that the angelic host would become so real, Father, that their lives would be dramatically changed, Father, that they would begin to walk in the confidence of knowing that heaven surrounds them every day, that they do not need to wait until their body passes, but that this is for the here and now. And I ask you to increase people's faith right now, Father. And Lord, for those that are hurting right now, those that are having emotion, need emotional healing right now, Father, they've been wounded. I see people that have been wounded in their, their souls right now. And they, they manifest in anger and they manifest in bitterness and resentment. Father, I thank you that you love them so much, Lord, and you just want them to be authentic about how they're, they're feeling, Lord, about the different people and issues in their life. And, and I thank you, Lord, that you're sending healing to their souls right now in the name of Jesus. I just speak healing to you, that you would come to that place of knowing that he died, buried, and resurrected to bring you the healing in your soul. You are so very important to him, and he loves you so very, very much. Position yourself next to him and receive that complete healing. Father, I praise you, and I thank you, Lord. I, I I see in the spirit realm that there's somebody that in the back of their neck, um, they, they have been having a lot of pressure and pain in the back of their neck and it's attached to their muscles. And so Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, for, for healing the back of the neck right now, Lord, and, and any impulses that are going down the spine, Lord Jesus, Father, we just ask you, Lord, to bring healing, Lord, to every nerve ending right now in the name of Jesus. I, I also sense that, that um, there are people that are watching the program right now and their hands are actually heating up. God is showing them that this is, this is actually part of the supernatural manifesting, that, that hands that are heating up, hands that are becoming on fire are part of uh, receiving that power from on high, receiving the supernatural. And so Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for for people you're activating, uh, even by faith, Lord, those people to walk in healing gifts or even to know, Lord Jesus, when the fire angels are around, Father, that, that they would come and bring healing as well at your command, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're activating senses right now, Father, so that people are beginning to step into that place of knowing, Lord, that you're calling them to move out in their giftings, Lord. And so we just thank you and we praise you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. I thank you for the impartation coming to people right now impartation through this word, Father. Um, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your angels surrounding them, Father, and taking them to next level relationship with you, Father. Magnify uh, yourself, Father. Magnify yourself, Lord, as people learn and grow in your word and begin to speak and utter the oracles of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, Dr. Candice, thank you so much for that, for stepping out with words of knowledge. And if any of my listeners or viewers, if that was you, if you felt that heat in your hands, if you have pain in your neck, we want to hear from you. We want to celebrate the goodness of God. We want to just agree with you for the healing, because when God calls something out, when he reveals it, he intends to do it. It is a done deal, signed, sealed, and delivered. And I'm excited for those that begin to feel the heat in their hands, that they would have the manifest realization of what God is doing in their mm -hmm. lives. So Dr. Candice, thank you for your obedience in stepping out and praying for us that way. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, I really felt like there's a tingling that's going to come upon some people and it's going to be a sign to them that the Holy Spirit is really working in and around their lives and they, they need to step out. Debbie, thank you so much for having me be a guest. It was truly a pleasure and an honor. Absolutely. It was my honor to have you and to get to know you. And I'm sure we will have many more opportunities together to share and to be with each other. And um, so this is uh, Dare to Hear the Podcast. I'm Debbie Kidman. We want to thank you so much for joining us. We want to encourage you. We want to bless you. We want to challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God in your life. If you've been encouraged in any way, we would love for you to subscribe to our podcast stations. We'd love for you to share this with your uh, friends and your family. Get the word out there about Dr. Candice, her book, releasing heaven and all of the other things that she shared with us today so we thank you for joining us i look forward to having you on next episode until then god bless and goodbye Shadows of